If you're looking for the best laptop for graphic design or digital art, you found the right video. In this video, we're gonna work our way from the budget category all the way up to the premium high-end laptops. And I'm gonna explain the specs and the reasons the prices increase throughout the video so you know which laptop is right for you and how much performance you need for your specific use case. Now, starting off in the entry level category, you can see we have laptops ranging from about the $600 price point all the way up to about the $1,000 price point. Now, on the lowest end of the spectrum, you're gonna see the HP Pavilion. Well, this laptop does have the latest Ryzen 5 7530U processor, great for graphic design and digital art. It has eight gigs of RAM, that could be a hindrance and a bottleneck, and we'll talk about that in just a second. 256 gigs of solid state storage, and a 67% sRGB. SSD stands for solid state drive, in case you didn't know that lingo. Now, looking at the specs, seeing the eight gigs of RAM, eight gigs is an okay starting point. Now, basically, if you don't know what RAM is, every time you open an application on your laptop, you're going to be pulling from RAM or memory. Each program takes a certain amount of memory or RAM to run. So let's say you open Google Chrome. That's going to use anywhere from one to two gigs of RAM. Say you open Photoshop. That's going to use anywhere from three to six gigs of RAM. Then you open Spotify or some other music player, or you get onto YouTube and you start playing a podcast, whatever you're doing you're easily going to go above or hit that ceiling of eight gigs of RAM as soon as you start opening multiple applications at one time. And I don't know about yourself, but when I do my graphic design work, I'm usually working in two to three programs at a time, depending on my needs. And I'm also listening to music and probably doing some research on Google or Safari or Edge, Lord bless you, if you need to do your research. So that's why I honestly think eight gigs is an okay starting point, but really, 16 gigs is really where you want to kick it off to have more ceiling. Now, the next set thing to look at and the reason why this initial laptop is so affordable is the color gamut range. You can see we have a 67% sRGB on the color gamut range. Now, for those of you who aren't really familiar with color gamut range and color accuracy, I have a full video series on that on my channel, and I'll link it up at the end of this video so you can check it out. But basically, color gamut range is the amount of colors that your computer is able to reproduce the range of colors um, versus the Delta E, which is the accuracy at which that range is reproduced. So a smaller range means that your laptop cannot produce as many colors. And therefore, if you're producing digital art or graphic design work, your designs or art may not be as color accurate as you hope. So if color accuracy is very important to you, then having a higher sRGB or specifically a higher Adobe RGB, because the Adobe the RGB range is actually larger than the sRGB range, then that would be something and a reason to spend more money on your laptop. Not even thinking from a performance standpoint, but from a you know user experience and accuracy standpoint. All right, so I hope that you know, kind of brushes up on the initial specs. Let's keep moving forward. You can see next we have the Asus VivoBook 16. This is a great laptop, has great performance. We have a mix of last year's processors and this year's processors. You can see we have the i5-1240P. That's actually last year. We're now in 13th gen, but that's still a fantastic processor for graphic design and digital art. And then we have the Ryzen 5 7530U from 2023. Again, this one has eight gigs of RAM and I've seen it in options from 256 up to 512. Next, we have the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. This is a great laptop because it comes with an H series processor. This is a very high performing processor. The first two laptops had processors that are um, low TDP processors, meaning that they have lower power consumption. This third laptop has a, a processor that's more normally found in um, high end gaming laptops or video editing or 3D modeling laptop. So it's able to run at higher thermal temperatures for longer periods of time, giving you more performance. However, the downside of that is battery life. You're gonna see less battery life out of a laptop with an H series higher TDP processor. Um, this one still does have eight gigs of RAM. So that's a bit of a bottleneck as well. I would wanna see this one at 16 gigs of RAM complemented with that H series processor to really create the full value. However, the biggest benefit of this laptop is the 100% sRGB because this is an OLED display. A little trick uh, of the trade, if you see an OLED display, chances are that is a 100% sRGB screen. Not always, not 100% not, not of the time, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you can, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to have really good color accuracy out of those OLED displays. All right, next up on the list, we have the Acer Swift 
O3 OLED or the Acer Swift X, two great laptops. Um, you can see they come with slightly different processors, so do a little bit of digging uh, when you're going to go making your go and make your purchasing decision. The reason I have these linked together is because they're very similar chassis, and they actually share pretty similar price points um, up until this point. This year's model with the i7-13700H and RTX 4050 went up a little bit in price by about $200. So you could actually go ahead and snag maybe last year's model and still get a great laptop at a great price. Um, I would definitely go for the 16 gigs of RAM and uh, it comes with the 512, S 512 gig SSD. And then of course, for the OLED model, that 100% sRGB. One of my favorite laptops on this lineup is the Lenovo Yoga 9i. Um, I actually have the 7i listed, but the 9i is also awesome as well. And I'll link both models in the description below. Man, this two-in-one laptop is really well built. It's so thin and light, has great battery life, a nice large trackpad. It is a two-in-one touchscreen laptop that includes a really nice cover and pen when you purchase it. Um, has great battery life. Don't know if I mentioned that uh, off the top of my head. And a really nice speaker. So this is a fantastic experience. Now this is going to be one of the more premium laptops on the lineup. Starting at around the $899 price point and then heading up into the $1,000 to $1,100 price point. But you're going to have an i7-1355U. Uh, you. You're going to have a 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD with 100% sRGB. Now, you couldn't even get last year's model, which has the i7, I think it was the uh, 1260P which was a fantastic processor as well, and you might be able to save a little bit of money. Um, next up on the lineup, we're going to head down the list here. We have the HP NV 2-in-1. This is probably um, my third favorite. <clears throat> this is probably my second favorite. I take that back. Not my third. My second favorite from HP. My absolute favorite from HP would most likely be the Spectre X360. Uh, the reason being is it has these like rounded edges, and I just really like the super large trackpad on this one. I mean, the trackpad is awesome. Um, so this is a great laptop too. If you're considering between Lenovo and uh, HP, these two laptops are very comparable and I like them a lot. Now, as we're going through this video and you're thinking, well, Ben, I have some laptops on my list and I'm looking at some laptops, but I haven't seen you talk about them so far. Just remember that these are my favorites. So look at the specs. Look at how I'm talking about them. Look at where they line up in my series and kind of compare the one that you might be looking for. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of the laptops on the lineup, because I do have estimated prices, but prices do tend to change all the time, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that, that is what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right, the next up on the lineup, we have the Apple MacBook Pro Air M2. This is both the 13-inch and the new 15-inch model. These are going to be great laptops for graphic design. Now, if it were me, I would teeter between the idea of upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM. The interesting thing about the uh, new Mac uh, sil Ma Apple Silicon is that it is a, a memory that is really connected far closer to the actual chipset than say a Windows laptop. So let me kind of explain this in very basic terms. When you have memory in a Windows laptop, it's like a disconnected uh, portion. So if you have these two things here, the memory is a separate entity from the CPU. So you have the CPU and you have the memory, and then you have this like travel between where it has to communicate and it loses some of its bandwidth through <clears throat> that travel process. Whereas when you have an SOC chip from Apple, it's much more integrated. They call it integrated memory or integrated RAM. And so it doesn't have to travel as far. And so it makes more use out of the eight gigs. Uh, it almost makes eight gigs like 12 or 16 when you have it on Apple. So just keep that in mind that eight on Apple is going to be pretty much like 16 on Windows, in my opinion. You might, if you're a computer nerd and computer expert, you might yell at me in the comment section, which I'm happy to take your criticism. Um, next up on the lineup is going to be the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and just the regular 360. Now, here's a little hack. The Pro 360 and the 360 have the exact same CPU. So if you want to save a little money, go ahead and just get the 360. Because, yeah, like you might get a couple extra features with the Pro 360, but, man, you can save, like, what's, what's my pricing on there? You can save, like, 
six to seven hundred dollars um, by just going with the 360. I have the Pro 360 here before me. It's a fantastic laptop. This is a 16 inch model. It has a pen that magnetizes to the top of the screen, a massive trackpad. And so this is a really, really good laptop. Now, I was talking to a digital artist a while back and he's a comic book artist. And he was saying that when it comes to his workflow, he has tons and tons and tons of layers on his projects. And so what happens is that 16 gigs of RAM while being used in Photoshop really starts to bog down. So he prefers to have 32 gigs of RAM. He actually bought the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and found that the RAM was not enough. It was bottlenecking. Now that just isn't for the the Samsung alone, that's for really any laptop. So if you're doing really heavy graphic design or digital art, um, you're going to definitely want to consider 16 to 32 gigs of RAM in your system. And that leads me to the next laptop on our lineup. Now, this laptop does come in a couple different variations. This is the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 2023 model. The large trackpad is in the building. So stoked to have an upgraded trackpad on this model. I can't tell you like how amazing it is for this laptop to come with a huge trackpad because to me, that was the one thing this was missing last year. I was telling people, hey, wait for the 2023 model because that larger trackpad is going to make a big difference. Now, the cool thing about this laptop is it comes in both integrated graphics and dedicated graphics. So you can get this one with just a Ryzen 9 7940HS for around the $1,200 price point. Again, check the live pricing when, at the recording of this video. The model hasn't even actually launched where you can purchase it online, um, at least to my knowledge for the last time I checked. And so the pricing could fluctuate. Um, so you have the integrated graphics version and then you have the RTX 4070 version. Now keep in mind, for the integrated graphics version, you're only gonna get 16 gigs of RAM. For the RTX 4070 version, you're going to get 32 gigs of RAM. Now, I would go for the 32 gig RAM model because it'll put no cap on this laptop. This laptop is a beast with that RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM. So if you're somebody who wants tons of performance and a two-in-one touchscreen laptop, then holy moly, you need to be considering this laptop because it packs a punch, it's compact, gets great battery life, has a large trackpad. This thing has so much going for it. Now, it is a little on the pricey end um, with that dedicated GPU, but uh, well worth it in my personal uh, opinion. Now, the next up on the list is going to be the Apple MacBook Pro M2. This is a fantastic model for graphic designers. I actually just purchased my wife the uh, 2023 M2. I don't know if it's 2023. It's just the latest model of the 13-inch MacBook Pro. She is a complete Apple fangirl, so I could not convince her of the stacks and stacks of Windows laptops that I have available to me. She wanted me to go ahead and purchase her a MacBook Pro, so I did. Um, and she absolutely loves this thing. It's got a nice large trackpad. It's quick. It's snappy. She is really big into photography, so she does all her pictures on the laptop, and it works really, really well for her. Um, but it is an incredible graphic design laptop, especially if you go ahead and upgrade it to 16 gigs of RAM, then your multitasking will be amazing. Like I said, 8 and 16, very similar. But if you find yourself a heavy uh, uh, multitask, multiple program user, or you're using tons and tons of layers in Photoshop, then I definitely recommend getting up to that 16 gigs of RAM for Apple. Um, but the pricing is actually really good on this one, about $14.99. And considering all the price points for the premium laptops, uh, this is something that really you can't go wrong with. I really, my career was done for graphic design on Apple products. Um, I went through my bachelor's, my master's degree for graphic design, and then worked as a graphic designer for many years. And Apple was my go-to. It was only once I made the transition over to like video editing and doing After Effects work and streaming videos and, and doing all the stuff I hear to do now for my YouTube channel that I made the jump over to Windows. Um, and Apple has really redeemed themselves in my book with their new Apple silicone. So great option. Next up on the list, we have the HP Victus and the HP Omen. Now, what we're going to see here as we move forward uh, on this lineup is more gaming laptops, gaming laptops that are high performance or laptops that have unique selling points. For instance, the Z13 at the end of this list has the greatest battery life I've ever seen on a Windows laptop. I got almost, well, maybe I did get over. It was about 20 hours of battery life. It was insane. And so um, the, the gaming laptops here are great 
from a performance standpoint. Some of them have good color accuracy, some of them do not. But really the reason gaming laptops are beneficial is if you're somebody who wants to, yes, do graphic design, yes, do digital art, but you're also interested in gaming on the side. You're also interested in doing some video editing or motion design along with your graphic design or digital art. They basically allow you to take the ceiling off of whatever creative task you want to do with a dedicated GPU and a strong H series high TDP processor. So are these laptops necessary for graphic design or digital art? No, they're not. But what they are is they allow you to take up your creative skills to the next level in different ways. Um, and so that's why this these are on, on the lineup. I did not want to leave these out. So HP Victus, HP Omen, great budget-friendly options, especially in that Victus. Um, and then the Le Lenovo Legion Slim Pro 7 and the Ni Slim Pro 9i are two great laptops. Honestly, I would say the 9i is the new kit on the block that's bringing a lot more performance. I reviewed the Slim, uh, Slim Pro 7 this year. It was good, um, but it was not overly impressive anything from last year. So the Slim Pro 9i with the uh, i7-13 7, uh, 750H, actually I think that is a 705H. There's some weird numbering skew from, from Intel this year. Unless that was just a typo on my part. Um, and then also the RTX 4060. Really, really good model there. Next up would be the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Both the 2022 model and the 2023 model are, are really, really good. Honestly, the problem with that Asus put themselves in uh, this year is 2022 models were so good that they've had a really hard time outperforming the 2022 models. So this is the 2023, but they are nearly identical in design. Um, from 2022 to 2023, you have the same large trackpad, the color accurate screen, you have the upward facing speakers, 14 inch incredible on the go performance. I really like the 22 model with the RX 6700S and you can often find them on sale at bestbuy.com if you're in the States for like right around or under a thousand dollars. It's insane. Now, if I were getting a 2023 model, I've talked about this at nauseum in my full review videos, I would start at the RTX 4070. I would not buy below the 4070 because you might as well buy from 2022 because the new 4060 gets the same, if not actually lower performance than the 2022. So that's my opinion on the uh, Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Next up is the Lenovo Legion Slim series. This is a great series. It's one of my favorite 16 inch laptops that you can buy. It comes in a ton of different SKU variations. So whether you're a Ryzen or Intel fanboy, um, you are really covered. Now also this year, they've come out with the new Slim 5. So in the past, it's only been the Legion Slim 7. They now have the Slim 5, and I actually have one I'm going to do an unboxing here very soon. I'm really curious to check out the differences between the Slim 7 and the Slim 5. I'm guessing the Slim 5 is going to be more plastic materials, where the Slim 7, um, I've already reviewed one of those this year, and it's still that really awesome aluminum build quality. So I'm thinking the Slim 5 is like just a budget-friendly option to save you a little bit of money. Okay, then next up is the Lenovo ThinkPad Z13. Great laptop for battery life. Um, not necessarily the most flexible laptop. It is not a, uh, it's not a touch screen. So that's something you want to consider is it's just more of a business slash professional laptop. It'd be almost like saying like the MacBook Pro. Great battery life, but not a touch screen. Great performance. Um, it just doesn't have that flexibility if you're a digital artist looking for that touch screen option. Looking for the touchscreen option. Um, next up, we have the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. This is a great laptop, again, if you are a digital artist who wants to use your screen a lot for drawing or sketching or even just creating art because it kind of pivots out and it creates a really nice drawing experience. Um, this laptop is quite pricey, though, so keep that in mind. I've seen them range from about the $1,200 price point all the way up to $2,000, depending on the CPU you get within the system. Next up, we talked about earlier, is the HP Spectre X360. This is my favorite from HP for creators. 
um, specifically for graphic design and digital art. Like I said earlier, it just has a nice large trackpad. It's got great build quality. It's all aluminum build, great performance. It, it's a solid laptop and it comes in a ton of different sizes. So whether you want to go for the 14 inch model or cruise up to the 16 inch model because you want a bigger screen, you've got a lot of options from the HP Spectre X360. One of the most unique laptops and one of my favorite laptops I've reviewed over the past year was Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 3. Now this laptop actually has a sketching screen, like a little tablet on the keyboard deck, which was super useful. If, if you want to learn more about this laptop, just watch my full review because I dive into how to use it and the, like the intelligence and thoughtfulness of the laptop because it is a crazy cool laptop. Um, I, 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 yeah, I can't even do it justice explaining it in this short video, but it's got great performance, really great features, and um, it's a killer, it's super killer. Now, without a doubt, the laptop that must be mentioned in this video is of course the Lenovo Yoga Book. 9i the dual screen laptop from 2023 official 100 dual screen laptop with so many cool features and functionalities comes with the stand it comes with a pen it comes with a mouse it comes with a keyboard um, so this thing is incredible now because it's because the um processor is running two screens i found the performance to be not as amazing as i had hoped for but it still had good performance it had about the performance of the uh, 2020 or 2019 MacBook Pro M1 when it first came out, which is still great performance, great for graphic design, digital art, but it didn't have as much performance as, say, you know, the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, which is one of the best performing laptops you can get inside of Photoshop. So performance was good. Features were amazing, and so I'd give it an overall great. I wouldn't be like, this is the best laptop that money can buy, but I would give it a great uh, classification. Next up is the Gigabyte Aero 14 and 16. The great thing about this laptop was 100% sRGB and 97% Adobe RGB, really improving the build quality this year on this laptop in both the 14 and the 16 inch. And they have super powerhouse performance. So i7 13700H or the i9 13900H, and you can get it from the RTX 4050 all the way up to the 4070. So those are two really good options um, for graphic design and digital art. Next up on the list is the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and 5i. These to me are the best bang for buck from a 16 inch laptop perspective with great, great performance and very little ceiling on the performance. You can edit 6K. Heck, you can even get away with editing 8K footage on the Lenovo Legion 5 and 5i or Pro 5 and Pro 5i. Great, great laptops. Um, bright screen, color accurate screen. Now, they are a gaming laptop. They're pretty thick, pretty chunky. But man, for the price point, you can usually find these from anywhere um, around the $1,279 all the way up to about uh, below $2,000. Um, now, the 1279 is going to be great performance for any digital artist or graphic designer. As you move up, you're going to be getting into the more of the motion designer, 3D modeler, video editor. Um, but man absolutely killer laptop. Now, one of my favorite laptops from a uh, flexibility standpoint, similar to the uh, X13, because it's the big brother or the papa of the X13, is the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16. So this one has the massive glass trackpad, two-in-one laptop, touchscreen, amazing performance, HS series processor, so still for a huge laptop, gets great battery life upward facing speakers, awesome color accurate display. This is one of my favorite 16 inch laptops for graphic designers and digital artists because of the flexibility and performance that it comes with. Um, I could go on and on and on talking about this laptop because it is such a great buy, but this video would then be an hour long. Just go watch the full review if you want more details on that laptop. Uh, next up on the list is going to be the MacBook Pro 14 uh, and 16. This is, you can get it in either the M2 Pro or M2 Max. Honestly, you can get it in the M1 Pro or M1 Max because I did not personally think that the M2 was that big of an upgrade. I think that the M1 Max and M1 Pro were good. And until Apple, until they do something new, um, it really isn't like a big deal. I, M2 to me was not as big of a deal uh, for most creators. I think there's a certain tier of like fringe creators. 
uh, that would benefit from the M2 and the M2 Max, but overall, M1 and M1 Max will be plenty of power, and you can save some money. Um, can you buy them new? Yeah, I think you can still find them new on certain websites, um, but overall, refurbished are great as well, so you can find a deal uh, from a certified refurbished uh, company. Next up is the Razor Blade 14, 15, 16, and 18. <laughs> There are a lot of razor blade models. Um, they are all great performers. They have really good build quality. To me, these are like the doppelganger MacBook Pros. Um, they're the best build quality that you can get from uh, Windows laptops, in my personal opinion. They just have that really professional premium build to them uh, that is found uh, in Apple laptops. One of my favorite laptops by far is going to be the Asus StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. This is the laptop with the dial. I've promoted this one a lot over the past couple of years because it is incredible. The dial is such a productivity booster. Again, I've had full videos on this laptop on my channel if you want to learn more about the ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. Amazing color accuracy, amazing performance. Um, can't go wrong with that laptop. It is, it is an absolute beast. Next would be the Asus ZenBook uh, Pro 14 OLED. This is one of those laptops that is much more of a premium laptop for creators with performance. As you can see, we have the i9-13900H and the RTX 4070 with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD, as well as 100% sRGB and 91% Adobe RGB. And it's all at around the $2,000 price point, which is a really good price for this laptop. Very, very impressed. Now, they also have a 16-inch model of this laptop. You can see here, I don't have this one listed right now because I don't know uh, when the 2023 model is fully coming available. It might be available actually this week. But you can see we have a dial on the uh, top of the keyboard deck, large glass trackpad. This keyboard actually elevates off of the deck to make it a little more ergonomic. You have an OLED display. So either, either so whether you're getting the 16 inch or the 14 inch, the uh, ZenBook Pro series is fantastic. Next up, we have the HP Envy 16. I have one of those right here. Great performer in Photoshop, in Design Illustrator, uh, and also a great performer for video editing or motion design as well. But like I always say, if you're going to get into motion design, I definitely recommend 32 gigs of RAM for After Effects. After Effects is a RAM hog, and so you're going to want to definitely have enough uh, RAM for that. Dell XPS 15. This is the laptop that I first bought when I transferred from Apple to Windows. I was a Apple fanboy for a long time. And then I, I was, I was at uh, about 2017 and Apple was really, really underperforming in that time period. And so I made the jump over to the Dell XPS 15 and loved it. Aluminum top cover, carbon fiber keyboard deck. It's just a great laptop and uh, it has good performance. That RTX 4050 to me, it would be underpowered for like 3D modeling or, you know, heavy video editing. But for digital art and graphic design, it is a great buy. The MSI Creator Pro Z16 HX Studio, ton of performance, great color accuracy, the best from MSI for creators by far. They've got a lot of different models, but this is the one that stands out to me the most. And then as you can see, we have the uh, Razer Blade 14. That's a 2023 version with the Ryzen 9 7940HS and the RTX 4060. To me, that is going to be the laptop that competes most with the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Super good model, great build quality. It's going to really edge out the G14 from build quality just because it's more of that premium aluminum aesthetic. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or check the live pricing of any of the laptops you've seen on this lineup. Comments and questions below. Either myself or somebody from the community can help you make the right laptop purchase based on the information we've presented here today. And click or tap the screen for more videos I've talked about during this one. I'll see you guys here in the next one.